this conversation. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, Abit Baidas of Identity Branding Forum. My uh, handsome, great looking uh, colleague, Mr. Gutam Sen Gupta. And I'm going to make sure uh, Gutam leaves this session uh, it, 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 seeing himself totally different from anything else that he ever envisioned. Uh, since we are talking about a, a, a morale note, uh, let me start with something. If I said to you, every one of you, that I, we, will, we are planning to give every single person sitting with us, finishing up this webinar, a million dirham after this webinar is complete. I'm sure every one of you will be very enthusiastic, right? And, will be, and that enthusiasm will develop the motivation to stay and listen with a high morale because now they are feeling great because now I know there is an expectation of a million dollars at the end. I want to keep that thought in your mind until the end to see uh, how is that million dollar is going to be transformed. <clears throat> Great. Let's get started. Talents of Endearment Career Labs is the one behind all of these events that we are creating on almost on a weekly basis, creating context uh, from uh, imaging, uh, perceptions, reality, confusion. Today's, the, today's subject is, uh, is not less important than any, any other subjects we've addressed, but it actually, it peaks the importance of everything else. I want to think, just like I said with the million dollar, you grew up in an environment, and that environment is positive. Uh, you're being always pushed with uh, 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 f great feedback, enthusiasm, wonderful, commenting. Uh, you're going to be growing great. Your morale is always going to be motivated. Uh, your kids is going to have the same enthusiasm, almost like myself and Gutan. Now, what I want you to think about in this conversation is what makes a happy ending and what makes a miserable ending when we start with this conversation. Talents of Endearment, just a brief introduction, is a program of identity branding forum for over 24 years. I've been really creating a lot of stuff. Now, because of this subject, uh, is, is, uh, I'm overexcited to talk about this subject. Just visit our website, identitybrandingforum.net, to see who we are and the, things, uh, the amazing things that we did and we are doing right now. Now, what I want to start here, since we are talking about motivation, let me share this video. Let's watch it together, please. living in a world of today, okay, that's filled with a lot of negative news, everything that is imp uh, impactful on our livelihood, uh, uh, lockdowns, deaths everywhere, businesses are closing, and uh, <coughs> uh, companies are going bankrupt, uh, unemployment, no jobs, uh, I'm broke, I cannot afford to, 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 to to, to cover up my cost of livings and everything else. All of these combined elements that we hear about in the world today is, uh, is affecting our morale. And why this subject is important for us today, because low morale uh, leads to low motivation. I don't wanna do anything. I don't feel like doing anything. And whenever you hear people today talk about uh, negative things, I don't think this is gonna work. I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think it, related to morale. It's a low morale. When somebody starts talking negative, it's a low morale. That person doesn't want to see anything happen, doesn't feel like seeing anything happening, which affects the productivity at the very end. So think about it the way we are brought up. The, in the, 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 if we are brought up in a positive environment, we're going to succeed. 
That's why they always say, show me your friends, I will show you your future. So if that doesn't change, nothing is gonna change. So we have to understand in perspective, what is the, 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 the fundamentals of morality in that sense? So there is a definition of morality, the types of moralities in the facts. In the military, it's defined a little bit differently. It's enthusiasm. We, 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 go to, we don't go to war because we wanna fight, okay? It's not about that. Uh, we go to war because we feel we will feel enthusiastic that we want to accomplish something. We want to do something. We feel something, a common ground that is going to hit get us to where we want to be. So we go to uh, uh, so the, the fundament the, the the morale associated with war is enthusiasm. In uh, in sports, it's confidence of the team because you cannot win if your confidence in the team is down. And this, in, in education, for example, is e e eagerness to learn. Not because of the degree, it is because I feel I'm eager to, I'm always hungry, I'm always thirsty. Think of it in that, in those terms. In business, it is, the, it's associated with, the, for example, how, how the goals that I'm going to achieve. It is not associated with the pay, with the bonuses and the likes. These are given rewards in the business. But when you start fundamentally gearing people to think of their goals, make and making them believe, understand that these, their goals are their <coughs> business goals. Everybody's going to be motivated. Uh, kindly, Gautam, would you mute your mic, please? So this way, uh, until you, you get the chance to speak. Thank you. So when we get to the second, uh, so basically this here builds uh, attitude, company's attitude, organizational behavior. So that attitude, whether an individual level or a group level, uh, they, towards everything affects the performance and the moralities of every uh, everybody. Okay, how, how, how your employees uh, feel towards their other employees, how, they, how the employees feel towards uh, their leadership, their management, their executives. How take it, to, take it to the level of the students. How do the students like or dislike the instructors? The, the, the subject matters they are studying, what they're studying for. Everything is associated. When we see something that is lack performance, don't misjudge the person because there is a misalignment. There is something wrong in that picture. And I will take you to something here. And this is a true story that I'm going to share with you. Le every morality is, a, is at the leadership level. There is a true story of an army in Jordan back in the early the 30s and 40s. And the, the, the head of the army, an off, a new officer came into the, to the, to the battlefield, to the front, and saw the soldiers dirty, suffering with ticks problems all over themselves, itching, and they cannot sleep, tired, exhausted, hungry. So the first thing he did, he went out and brought soaps and, allowed, and, and let those soldiers wash themselves, clean themselves up, eat good, to relax. Next day, first thing in the morning, he, he gets summoned to the headquarters. And he went there excited, thinking that I'm going to be commended for what I have done by the, by the, uh, by the commander uh, in, in chief. So he went in there and walked in there. The first thing the, the commander tells him, he says, what have you done? And the officer said, well, practice, well sir, what do you mean? He says, what did you do to the soldiers? He says, I cleaned them up. Because they were dirty, they were they were ticks, they cannot sleep, they couldn't do anything. And the leader says, you are ruining them. And the officer looked at him and he says, how am I ruining them? He says, because when they have ticks, they cannot, they, they cannot sleep. When they cannot sleep, they are on guard. And when they are on guard, they are able to defend better. So look at, let's look at the mindset, the attitude of the, 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 the commander-in-chief Run, governing, the, running this army. This is a true story, and not thinking the morale of his soldiers are way down, no matter how awake they are, how long they are awake for, they are not going to be able to achieve the job. So the cleaning of those soldiers boosted their morale. Now they feel better because it, it, they are they are in the fields. Remember, not because they want to fight. They are there because they are enthusiasm. They make feel, they makes them feel good about it, and that leadership didn't understand that. Think of it at the lower level at business. Think of it at home. Think of it at the education level. How, how we, our attitude as leadership, our management, the infrastructure, how is that affecting the morale of our employees? Don't think because what you believe is, is, is going to get the job done 
is act is fundamentally necessary is going to keep your people morale up so whatever you're going to do think of your morale the morale of your employees these are causes of the morale okay so the the, the, the relationships interactions the supervision too much too much of a watch i don't have enough freedom i don't have uh access to information uh, everything is looking poor to me which which causes me to actually see uh, bring my morale down causes it to, to have everything that i really what i anticipated i cannot be myself so all what if 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 everything i cannot allow my people to be themselves they will lose that enthusiasm they will have no motivation and that will affect your productivity at the end think of it the factors affecting the morale the picture of that company and i intended to put the the joy the 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 victorious army or the soldiers coming back with the amputated uh, legs so think your employees are going to be seeing that pictures students are going to be seeing that pictures of the future so do they do the students in college today see a victorious world or do they see an amputated successful world so that's the image that we really need to start to changing to focus on creating enthusiasm that is going to boost people's morale mo motivate them to action get them because they they're not they're not doing they don't want you don't want your people to do the jobs because they have to you want your people to do their jobs because they love to same thing for students don't fuck don't think the exams that the strengths the threats if you're not going to do that you're not going to pass there's then they're going to be studying not for the joy of it but for the fear of failure and losing getting the lower grades that's why we have a failing educational system so basically what we really need to do is to start thinking how to create enthusiasm create passion so people are there for the love of it not because they have to so when when you start seeing morale down start thinking of little store little things bring pizzas take everybody to lunch and i have a story of a very successful friend of mine in the us he ran the largest at the times in the 90s the largest commer uh, commercial real estate leasing company in the midwest in the united states all the way to new york and what he did this gentleman used to wake up in the morning at 3 o'clock at 5 o'clock in the morning he's at our office and he is having his meetings okay so people has to come to him to meet at 5 o'clock if they wanted his services and he had he did that so you go to his office at 5 o'clock his employees are there but not everybody as pumped up as he and he was and he used to actually allow everybody to leave early if they wanted to at 3 o'clock so what he did when he didn't see that actually kept uh, the, to, to increase their morale so what he did he did something very unique it, in one of the buildings that they were managing he took out the whole floor created a health club and with a very lavish breakfast buffet and he in incentivated every employee at his company to stump to come to the gym at three o'clock in the morning so everybody was coming to the three o'clock in the morning because now with the boss they're going to be playing they're going to be exercising they're going to be working out and they're going to be having a lavish breakfast at that buffet at five o'clock everybody was wills and whistles at that office running like crazy three o'clock everybody was pumped up energized left home but they discovered a life so what he did the productivity were triplicated it multiplied phenomenally without unrealistic so what he did all what he did basically is created a life for them created something that they can they get connected and excited about what they want to do and how to enjoy it together so what it is about here so morale versus motivation it is connected together so how is it to, to boost that morale we really need to start thinking about working together together we can achieve things why this is important because in inclusive collaboration and not include not competition we have grow up we've grown up in the world to be competitive to compete with each other to compete against each other that's why you have people in business and companies not worried about what happened to their teams but what they are doing basically is they are more concerned about winning against their, uh, to, uh, to be uh, to be the top of their crowd and that's why we had we had a negative environment 
at work. Same thing we are at, at, in schools. Because of the gradings, we promote this guy is at, 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 at A, all A's or all B's or all D's, okay? I, am among, I was among of the all E's, okay? To, to set your mind that if you were wondering about my age, because I, I wasn't there to compete. I was there, I was, I was there because I wanted to have fun. I wanted to be myself. I wanted to think me. I want to think to be me. That's where we really need to start looking at changing. So collaboration, not competition. Collaboration opens the door for everybody to be together, to work for, to, for, for each other. Now they start thinking of the team morale, not individual morale. The team morale will pull everybody out of the woods, will pull everybody out of uh, it, it, it being the lonely world, now I have a community, I have a society, I have a living, I have people that is going to lift me up to do the things that I want to uh, to do and enjoy. So what you really need, that's the thing is that what you really need to focus. Now think of the environment, the environment that is going to foster happy attitude. Everybody is working together. The leadership is blended with the teams from the top to the, to, the, to the bottom, to the very end. Everybody is the same, no difference between among them. This is what we call it inclusive collaboration. And that's when you start getting everybody to give you their feedback, telling you the, the, all the things that the, the, you, 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 whether the things that you wanna hear or you don't wanna hear. So that's the things that you really need to focus in, in those sense to make it sense. So, Imagine yourself when you have when, when everybody is down and here comes their CEO or the chairman of their company pulls up and says, guys, I, we, we're going to have a little, uh, I, we, we, we're going to start having a food tasting. Every week, one of you could decide to bring a meal for everybody at the office to, uh, the, the, for us to try it. Everybody will start feeling a proud. We actually did that at one of our offices before. They were enjoying just going to moms and mom. Today, today I picked to, be, to bring to, to let everybody taste your food. Everybody felt proud of their home. So what you really need to do, you really need to think of them, of your employees as families, so they can see you as a family. In schools, it's the same environment because it, unless the students don't, feel, if they don't feel that home environment, home feeling, they're gonna be feel, feel, feeling repelled. They're going to be feeling ex exhausted, burdened with all the things, not understanding what it means. So these are healthy fixes tips in that respect. So what you really need to do in, in brief, you really need to do, I'm sorry because the, I don't know why the slides came up. They were white, but now they are purple uh, since we're talking about morality. But what, what the biggest things that you really need to focus on is to connect to your people. They really need to, to know you understand the message clear, who you are. Do you understand who they are? Connect to their families. Now focus also on their out of work ac activities. What do they do? How do they live their life? We are more focused on what happens, what goes on in the office, not what goes on in, in their homes. That's where really we, we miss the mark and we miss because what happens at home, whether it's, if it's good, it's gonna come. It's gonna reflect on the employees' performance at, at the office. If it is bad, if it's gonna reflect on their performance at the office. So, what is it that we can connect? So, when we talk about big companies having resources, money, to do it, how could the small companies do it, or people do it? And I will stop here and give my chance, my my colleague, a chance to reflect his mind, and share with us his thoughts. Thank you, Abid. That was a nice, rounded, universal kind of view on morale. What happens in the army, what happens in the kitchen, what happens in the office. What I'd like to do is to bring it to us as individuals. The benefits of morale enunciated by Abid, what you all in the audience know already, there are huge benefits to having high, good morale. What does what does having good morale and a high your morale being high? What does it mean to me as an individual? Typically, if my morale is high, I will be a high energy person. 
Now, just step back for a moment and think of situations where you individually have been in the presence of a high energy person. And it, it impacts you. When the guy sitting and having dinner with you is a high energy person, some of that high energy rubs off on you. Whether you like it or not, whether you are open to it or not, it simply will come and it will impinge upon you. And so your spirits begin to rise at the same time. So when you have, when your morale is high, you are actually become, becoming a catalyst to raising the morale of people around you. As an individual, that's a huge benefit to have, both going out from you and coming into you. When I look at high morale, I think of a person who wakes up fresh in the morning. And I'll look at that for any situation. I may be a driver of a car or of a bus. I may be a dentist. I may be a student like many of you probably in the audience. But if I wake up fresh in the morning, every morning, I am probably more ready to take up challenges than the other guy. And so there's another benefit to me immediately. I begin to enjoy my work far more when my morale is high. I am a chef. And I'm more enthused to turn out new dishes. I'm more enthused to experiment. I am able to make better decisions if my morale is high. Because what morale, what morale does for me, or what actually creates the high morale, the good morale in my, in my system, is self-confidence, is self-worth, is self-esteem. Now, if my self-confidence, my self-worth and my self-esteem are high, which in turn means that my morale is high, well, I'm going to be bouncing. I'm going to be bouncing through life. Every day that I walk through life, I'm going to be bouncing and springing. I won't be walking. I won't be shuffling. Morale is made from a level of satisfaction that I have. It is made from a level of supervision that I have. It is made from the nature of work that I have. Do I enjoy my work? Do I not enjoy my work? Do I enjoy my, my work middlingly? Or do I enjoy it hugely? All these impact upon morale. And if you go to the internet, you will find that there are numerous ways touted by numerous people. And many of them are authorities. And they will tell you why having your morale high is good for you, is good for your environment, is good for the world generally. And they will teach you little things that you can do. Some from a Western perspective, some from an Occident, uh, from, a, from an Eastern Oriental perspective. And I'm going to share with you one such. I am Indian. And in Indian Hindu philosophy, we believe that there are seven centers of energy in the body and these are called the chakras i'm sure a large number of you who are listening in today will be familiar with the term chakras now what does chakra mean chakra means a wheel and it is the source of energy in your body at different points in your body the chakra by the way is what you see in the indian flag if you see the indian flag it is saffron, white, and green. And in the center of the white uh, part of the flag, you see that round thing. That's really a chakra. It's a wheel. <laughs> now, the seven chakras in the, in the human body, as identified through Hindu philosophy, starts with the, what we call the root chakra. It has a different name in Hindi, but I'm not going to bore you with that because the audience is understanding and speaking with... Uh, with English as the predominant language. The root chakra is located at the base of your tailbone, you know, at the base of your spine where the tailbone is. And that's the first chakra. And then you go up to the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and seventh. The first one, two, and three, four are your physical chakras. They relate to your physical body and your physical state. And then from the fifth to the seventh, they take you into the spiritual. So it's going from the physical to the spiritual. 
and the important one from the point of view of our chat here today is the fourth is the third chakra which is located where the solar plexus is located now all of you know that the solar plexus is located where your rib cage meets your upper abdomen it is it is this point you know just above the navel and that is called the solar plexus chakra and the energy that that chakra controls is self confidence self worth and self esteem i mean can you imagine these are the three things that constitute morale these are the developers of morale if your self confidence your self worth and your self esteem are low you will have low energy you will be burdened with a low morale and when you have a low morale you're not able to move because your confidence levels do not permit you to move but if you have high confidence high self esteem and high self worth you're going to rule the world and hindu philosophy and hindu medicine indian also have teachings which help us determine how we can open up the solar plexus chakra as much as they teach you how to open up the other chakras so this is something that would be interesting for you to for you guys in the audience today to to google and see what the solar plexus chakra does that it actually controls self confidence self worth and self esteem in individuals and what are the methodologies that are available to us simple methodologies that are available to us to open up that chakra and have it functioning at its fullest because a closed chakra means by definition that that chakra is not operating for you and so your self confidence your self worth your self esteem are at a low and you're doing nothing about it but if you open up that chakra you're able to actually benefit hugely from the value of the energies that are held in that solar plexus chakra i'm going to ask you abit to take over and you i'm sure you have something more to share on this now absolutely before i go to the next uh, uh, discussion i want to have run a poll for everybody to please share participate i want you to rate your morale is the poll coming up on the screen yes refresh if you cannot see it right you know i'll share the, the results in front of everybody would you all please participate okay no other takers i know there is quite a few more that can take it so the majority of the population here is at the four star uh 53% the level of their morale and there is a 13% uh of the two stars now we're getting an increase on the respects let's ask another question what motivates you the most please do all participate one or two words doesn't have to be a, a big paragraph one or two words what motivates you the most and i will show the results to everyone so you can see it and share the knowledge success okay who else a new challenges in your responsibility nice well i'm sure you you got a lot of them sharing in uh, lebanon <laughs> nowadays uh doing what i enjoy the most okay knowing that someone is caring about what i do wonderful Thank you Alia. Who else? The support and appreciation. Thank you Mr. Aqil. Who else? 
looking forward to the results also being the positive being positive is sort of the habit okay so there is different perspective from everyone that is looking at based on the environment where they are at or the, the position they are at uh, it's all associated expectations so we the reason why we uh, our morale is associated with our uh, motivation it's because of expectation the more expectation we have the less our motivation the the and the lower our morale is because we feel more burdened we are pressured we are unable or we may we may not fail a uh, number of other things so to create that environment in order to help companies individuals uh, especially college students or high school students to really start helping them to boost their morale, to help them enhance their knowledge and their ability to grow with it. We created a program called Tenants of Endearment and a few of those students who participated with us before uh, in the previous program sessions. And our aim basically is how to create passion. Because if, if, if you, like a few of the comments that's made in here earlier on, uh, being appreciated, being respected, being uh, knowing somebody that cares for me or what I do. That, that part of passion that we talk about uh, for humanity. Uh, and that's how humanity would thrive, how people would thrive and how business would thrive. If people don't feel that they have been respected, appreciated, they cannot. And the best way to show appreciation is allow people to think, allow people to be themselves grow to do the things that they want to do so what talents of interment does it actually it allows people to discover themselves their self-esteem build their self-esteem build their confidence not in just in themselves but it's also in the whole environment the ecosystem that they they, they they're fostered in they're planted in to help them grow uh and that's that's when you start actually identifying the, the, the things that, uh, that would lead us to the better opportunities. Uh, connect them to, with the business world uh, and stay connected with people, aspiration, because your business growth is not based on the great ideas that you have, but your ideas that are relevant to people's aspiration, whether you're employees, whether you're students, or whether people in, in, at home. Uh, that's what we really care about. So how we do it basically is we bring people together students, businesses, uh, entrepreneurs, in order to collaborate, think great, think big, imagine big, build big, and, it, and bring it out to the world that it makes it relevant, create relevancy. And so now we have activities that I'm enthusiastic about because now I'm, I'm doing the things that I feel that, I'm, that I wanna do, the things that makes me happy, the things that makes me excited, cr thinking crazy for a reason. And that's exactly what we foster during those sessions. So it's about how to win people's heart. You, whether you're at, at, at the office, you need to think about how you want people, how do you want to win your, your, your employees' heart? How do you want to win the hearts of the people, your employees' families, children, communities? Because the, the closer you are to your people, the closer you are to all that matters to them. That was gonna. That's what. That's gonna get make them enthusiastic. They want to jump out of bed at three o'clock in the morning and come to your office. They want to work, because that's what makes the difference. Is when they see that you care about not just them doing their jobs, uh, them and the well-being of their entire everything that they care about, their families, their home, because if you, they are happy, satisfied, their their families are gonna be asking about you. The families, they're going to be bringing you all the cakes, the fruit, the, the brownies, and everything that you dream of to, to change people's lives. Now you're becoming a game changer. And that's what we do in terms of endearment. How to think, to fulfill people's aspirations, to win their hearts. That's how you're able to change the whole scheme, the whole game of things, the whole uh, landscape of your business, the whole landscape of education and allowing students and allowing people to, to be enthusiastic. So to be enthusiastic, you need to let them free, set them free to think free, think big. If you see your people down, don't worry, you don't have to spend money, just take them to the Rolls Royce dealership. Allow them to, allow them to let their imagination go and says, we're gonna be working hard for every one of you 
to have a Rolls Royce. Not just me as a boss, because I want every one of you to, to own a Rolls Royce, and we're going to work together to make sure that dream is happening. That's what is going to matter. That is what's going to people's going to make get them excited and jumping. You see them down, take them to the. the if you see yourself down, and you, you you don't feel like going anything else, go to the to expensive homes, palaces. Imagine yourself in a year time that you're going to own that, and you will. And only the, your success is only as limited as your imagination. That's a reality. That's why they tell people tells you when you want us to be successful, associate yourself with successful people. Don't associate yourselves with 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 the naysayers. And the minute you see somebody to say no, you cannot do it. No, it is hard. No, things are tough. Change them. Change the people that tells you no. What you really need to do is somebody to put your crazy, crazy ideas into perspectives that helps you feel great. That helps you feel enthusiastic every time you see them. Most successful people in the world didn't make money out of nowhere. They worked very hard for it. People didn't believe in them. Look at the Amazon creator. Working for eight months, didn't see the world. Working hard, people didn't believe in him. Now he's the, the richest man in the world with an organization that is the largest retailer in the world. So what you really need to do to begin can be passionate about what you do for people to feel better. That's what's gonna make it different. So what we do is help people create a purpose. Think about when you have every employee, now understand their purpose in life, not in their purpose on their job because their, your employees jobs today are being competed for by robots or by a smart system, okay? So pe most people today don't, their hope, they, they feel that, because, sorry, because they don't see the future. What we really need, what we do at Terence of Endearment is we help you filter out all the things that are making you feel negative to focus on the things that are gonna make you feel enthusiastic. I want that one million, you're gonna tell yourself, you're gonna try to convince us now how are you going to get out to get us to pay to give you that one million dollar that I promised in the early on? But what what is it worth for you to take that one million dollar in cash and spend it in one day, or you take one million dollar of a of an inspiration that is going to take you a lifetime? What you really need to focus on is purpose for change, and that's what we do with uh, with intelligence of endearment. We show people, allow people to constantly by themselves learn how to really be themselves, to be passionate, to give and for them to grow and for their businesses to grow. Now, I wanna invite you to a, a very important session next on, the, on Monday the 22nd uh, with Mike Salisbury, the legend. And you will also in the handouts, you will see the link for you to register. This legend basically is actually created the success stories for Michael Jackson, the, Jura the, the movies, the Jurassic Parks, the Raiders, uh, it's phenomenal. You will see. You will see a whole different individ an individual. This is an opportunity of a lifetime that you're going to be able to, to enjoy and meet and, and talk to him in person. That's going to be on the 22nd Monday at eight o'clock in the evening, uh, the UAE Dubai time. And we also have a, a lead with endearment, but also the links is available on the handouts. What you really need to do is visit it. And now we are providing a sponsor the three days the first three days of the whole program. And you will see the details of really how we allow people to become themselves, how to become, to see the future cl with clarity, uh, whether it was your employees, to see to create, to, how to create, allow them to, be, to create relevancy to their jobs, how to become part of their lives, how part of the change. Uh, look at the, those details and take advantage of this offer. The first three days we are sponsoring those. And if you like the program, you just subscribe to it at the cost, uh, which is showing in the, uh, and you will see it in the, in the handouts. Uh, and we also started with, with a number of universities uh, with a smart internship, but also the link is available on the, on the, in the handouts. Uh, take advantage of this because this is a chance of a lifetime uh, for interns. And with, uh, now this program is recognized by a number of universities in UAE, India, and Croatia at this point, and we're growing with this time and in Jordan. So now uh, see uh, if you have a student in college or wherever they are, 
let them fill up that application and submit it because this is a chance of a lifetime for them. And also, we, we will leave you with one message. Keep it, in, keep it straight for everybody, together for each other. That's, that's the, what's behind the success of everyone. Keep it in mind. Keep it straight for you. And here I will stop and see if you have any questions uh, for us. Mr. Aqil, uh, do you have any question? I know you are a person that loves to ask. Please ask. Let me see if you would, if you would like to grant you the mic and the uh, ac and cam access. Mr. Aqil, you are more welcome to share with us because uh, Mr. Aqil uh, is a business-minded executive. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Sengupta. I don't know if Mr. Sengupta remembers. We did uh, some training long time ago when I was was working for 3M. I see. <laughs> I don't know if he remembers that. Good time. Do you remember him? I'm. Uh, I'm sorry. I said you've done some training for us when I was working with 3M. My God. Can you believe this? Yes. If you remember. Uh, yes, yes, yes. We've done some some, some sessions. Well, uh, yeah. I don't have a question, uh, but uh, I think the subject that you gentlemen have uh, talked about is very, very important and very critical, especially in the current pandemic. You know, uh, regardless of the circumstances, you will have some people... Uh, low on morale for one reason or another. It could be a family member who is sick or a, f a friend or the business is not doing very well. So I believe we do uh, need those uh, kind of sessions and we need to train ourselves a little bit to you know, interact with uh, positive people and uh, get the positive energy. And I liked what uh, Mr. Gupta talked about this uh, what you called it. Uh, I've never heard about it. I'm going to do some work on it now. The chakra. The yes. wheels. Yeah. So uh, I will try to understand a little bit more. But uh, I think it's a very important subject that you have touched on. And thank you very much for making this webinar. No, you. You're welcome, Mr. Mr. Akil. We, we, we appreciate your presence with us here today. Uh, I, I, I'd like to add one thing, Mr. Akil. Please. You see, it is very, very easy for us to accept that over the last one year, everybody around us has been dispirited, low spirits. But you know, to allow a COVID-19, a pandemic, to take over our lives and determine for us if we will be dispirited or highly spirited is not right. We have to take control back. You see, it has clearly, the pandemic has laid waste to a lot of businesses, to a lot of lives, to a lot of mental situations over the last one year. It's time now that we took control of our lives and we are the, we are the ones who determine our destiny, you know. And so we have to take and utilize whatever tools we have. And in most instances, I feel that the tools are already within us. We need to take them out and actually overcome what has, in a sense, overcome us. We have to take control back, and that's necessary. And that will only happen with high morale, high spirit, and enhancing our self-confidence, our self-worth, our self-esteem. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you, Mr. Apple. We appreciate you joining us today. And uh, before, in the closing, let's see a couple of more uh, question, uh, polls. Would you would like you to rate this session, please? Okay, thank you. And we also would like to, uh, to ask you, how do you feel now you, about your morale after this session? 
we made some improvements. Necessary. Necessary. Everybody, thank you very much. Any other comments of it? No, you want uh, to give your final closing statement? And then I will I, give you. Well, I, I must say I am delighted to have been associated with this event. We believe, you know, Abed is the creator of the Talents of Endearment program. And I am on the board of trustees. And I look after the governance committee, etc., on Talents of Endearment as a program. Now, the point is that I come with 40 years experience in the corporate world and as an entrepreneur. And I believe in the efficacy and the value of a program like Talents of Endearment, because what Talents of Endearment is able to do for people is not limited to morale lifting, etc. It is something that allows people to have higher self-awareness and be able to brand themselves personally. Because at the end of the day, what all of us have to sit back in our chairs and understand is that we are not the sum of and defined by the college degree that we got five years ago, one year ago, 20 years ago. We are far more than that. We are human beings with a college degree. And so we have to understand that that college degree forms only a minuscule part of our overall self and our being. And we as human beings have to progress in a manner that takes us beyond our college degree. And it is programs of the nature of talents of endearment which help us discover what we are, help us brand ourselves, so that I am able to, as an individual, realize far more of myself than a college degree permits me to do. Thank you, Abit. Thank you. And I will, I will close with one thing. You, your success, your future is only as limited or open as your imagination. I wanted to, every one of you to sit back, draw a picture, imagine how high you want to you get, how far you want to go, what, you, what is the most that you want to be. Think of it like your uh, uh, virtual reality headsets that you put on your eyes and you start imagining a whole different world that doesn't exist today, but except in your mind now. Draw that picture, draw that positive impression. So now you're, no matter what happens in your life, your mind is, has registered that image of the great person you are. You need to th keep thinking you are yourself. I cannot teach you to be me because I don't want you to be me. Okay, I want you to be you because you are your, in your best format in your own mind. Today, we have no experts. No experts. The reason why I'm saying that. Whatever knowledge that I had yesterday, before I went to sleep or the minute I wake up, is all the news. It's out. Something in you is coming out. So the only way that you're going to be able to be your own expert is when you are connected to the future. You need to see, discover your people, discover the community, discover the world around you. To live that world, you have to be connected and understand how to engage with, uh, with their aspirations. Now, now your enthusiasm is driven by their, by their aspiration. Now you can start seeing a whole a new a whole perspective, a whole a new ideas that is going to keep pushing you to that to the end journey as high as you want. And don't think by yourself. Think by who is going to collaborate with you. Think who I'm going to who I'm going to choose that's going to help pull me up uh, the, to, to reach that top, the, the 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 top of the Everest if that is what I'm after. The summit at the top of the Everest if that's what I'm after. There is, you're only as limited as your imagination. Don't stop it. And if you need help, we are ready there for you to help. Whether you're at the business level or an individual level or at schools levels. That's why we created the smart internship for students that started enrolling with us from India and the UAE uh, into that programs. Because what we want to do, not to help students to think 
or people to think uh, in terms of uh, uh, how I can be as best as I can be as an engineer. Well, you are you, whatever. How no matter how good you are today as an engineer, you've got robots are competing for your job. What you really need to do is how to become successful at what you are doing or planning to do in your life, and that's by connecting with people and engaging with people. With this, I close. Ask everybody, please stay safe, stay connected, stay positive, stay productive. Life is beautiful. We only complicate it with the, with the, with the limitations that we have. Let it go. Let your mindset free because you're a great person. When I'm talking to students, I'm talking to my future. That's why I get enthusiastic about it. Thank you. God bless. Take care. Salam alaikum. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.